Welcome to Value-Based Care, Regulatory Environment. This is Lecture C. In this lecture, we will discuss other key pieces of legislation. Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, HITECH Act, Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act, MACRA, the Physician Quality Reporting System, and the 21st Century Cures Act. The objectives for this lecture, other regulations, are to describe the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, HITECH Act, describe the Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act, MACRA, describe the Physician Quality Reporting System, PQRS, describe the 21st Century Cures Act. Strategies for improving the healthcare delivery system emphasized increased coordination across providers and the continuum of care, including transfer of information about patients across these providers, the availability of clinical decision support tools so that clinicians can make informed decisions on behalf of their patients, and payment approaches that incentivize providers to improve the quality of care and produce good health outcomes. The glue or mechanism for delivery system redesign is the availability and use of health information technology, HIT. HIT can improve the flow of information. However, for a long time, the United States was behind other countries in adopting HIT within the delivery system. For example, in this chart produced by the Commonwealth Fund, in 2006, only 28% of U.S. primary care physicians had electronic medical records. To address the slow pace of adoption of health information technology, Congress passed the Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, HITECH Act, as part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009. The act authorized the spending of nearly $44.7 billion to support providers becoming meaningful users of electronic health records specifically and health information technology more broadly. Qualifying physicians and institutions received incentives not just for purchasing HIT systems and EMRs, but also by demonstrating that they were using the systems in a meaningful way. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services developed the regulations governing requirements for meaningful use. Using an EHR in a meaningful way means that the technology is being used in the manner for which it was intended, such as e-prescribing, the electronic exchange of health information, and to submit quality measures. There were three stages for the meaningful use of health information technology, each with a variety of metrics. Stage 1 regulations were developed in 2010 and focused primarily on adoption, data capture, and meaningful use of electronic health records. Stage 2, from 2015 to 2017, had a greater emphasis on exchange of information. And Stage 3, which was finalized in the fall of 2015, focused on using EHRs to improve health outcomes. These stages are part of the CMS EHR Incentive Program for eligible professionals and hospitals. Goals for meaningful use are to improve quality, engage patients in their health care, to improve care coordination, and to improve population health, while maintaining the privacy and security of the patient's information. The HITECH Act has been successful at speeding the adoption of information technology in hospitals. A study by Julia Adler Milstein and her colleagues, using data from the American Hospital Association, charts the growth in the electronic health record adoption among general acute care hospitals in the U.S. The researchers found that 75% of hospitals had at least a basic system in 2014, up from 59% in 2013. In 2014, 34% of hospitals had comprehensive systems compared to 25% of hospitals in 2013. Despite this progress, small and rural hospitals were less likely to have at least a basic system. Among hospitals that did not meet the threshold for having a basic EHR, 
most had adopted some functionality, with about 75% of this group with eight or more basic EHR functions in place. By 2015, 96% of all hospitals had a certified EHR. The requirements for receiving incentives were designed to become more stringent over time in stages. For instance, the percentage of patients for whom e-prescribing was used increased in Stage 2 compared to Stage 1, and Stage 2 also required hospitals to develop systems to exchange clinical information using a certified EHR in order to receive monthly payments. By 2014, 76% of hospitals reported being able to exchange information with providers outside the system, an improvement from 41% in 2008. HITECH not only encouraged the adoption of electronic health records in hospitals, but in physician offices as well. By 2015, 78% of office-based physicians had a certified EHR which met requirements adopted by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Despite the fairly rapid adoption of EHRs post-implementation of HITECH, only 39% of office-based physicians reported having any health information exchange with other providers. So in terms of promoting adoption of EHRs, high-tech was fairly successful, but many of the changes leading to increased quality of care that were envisioned had begun, but were not yet widespread in 2015. The Physician Quality Reporting System was started in 2006 as part of the Tax Relief and Health Care Act. Providers who participated in the program would transmit quality metrics for their Medicare patients to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. As a result of the Affordable Care Act, beginning in 2015, physicians and providers will now receive penalties if they do not satisfactorily report their quality measures for Medicare Part B, Physician Component, services. Additional legislation, known by the acronym MACRA, Increase the pressure to focus not just on adoption of EHRs, but on using them to improve the quality of care. Medicare fee-for-service reimbursement to doctors has long been based on what is known as the Sustainable Growth Rate Formula, or SGR. The SGR formula sought to limit spending growth in the Medicare fee-for-service model that rewarded physicians for the number and intensity of services provided. It reduced fees paid to physicians if overall physician spending exceeded some target based on overall economic growth. That is, if physician expenditures for a previous year were greater than expected, reimbursement to physicians in the subsequent year would be reduced. A study published by the Commonwealth Fund described a number of criticisms of the SGR, including that it cuts fees for every service and for every provider under the Medicare fee schedule, regardless of the provider's contribution to spending growth, lacks incentives for improving quality, fails to address volume and intensity, which are significant drivers of Medicare spending growth, and penalizes providers who do control their costs. The Medicare Access and CHIP Reauthorization Act, MACRA, authorized in 2015, is intended to not only reduce uncertainty associated with physician payments, but also to reduce the emphasis on volume-based fee-for-service reimbursement. Under MACRA, physician fees will increase 0.5% until 2019 and then will remain level through 2025. MACRA also supports alternative payment models such as accountable care organizations and patient-centered medical homes. In December 2016, Congress passed the 21st Century Cures Act. Most of the focus of this legislation is on boosting funding for medical research, streamlining the drug approval process, and improving access to mental health services. Title IV of the law focuses on health information technology. There are a number of important HIT provisions, including encouraging HIT certification for specialty providers, including pediatricians, fostering the exchange of information and addressing issues related to interoperability, privacy, and security, assuring patient access to their health information, 
and increasing the use of telehealth services in Medicare. The Department of Health and Human Services is charged with developing and implementing accompanying rules and regulations. This concludes Lecture C of Regulatory Environment. In this lecture, we discussed two additional pieces of legislation that will have substantial impact on how care is provided. The High Tech Act provided incentives to encourage meaningful use electronic health records. Since the Act's passage, the U.S. has seen significant growth in the use of EHRs in hospitals and in physicians' offices. MACRA changes how physicians are reimbursed within Medicare. The new reimbursement mechanism is intended to incentivize doctors to improve the quality of care.